In any lawsuit, there are three essential elements that must be present in order for the court to have the power to hear the case. So those are personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, and venue. Today I'd like to talk about venue. Venue refers to where a lawsuit is filed. So in Georgia, that means which county your case will be tried in. We have 159 counties in Georgia, and that sure seems like a lot of choices. But uh, fortunately, the law provides for rules on where venue is proper. And venue is a matter of constitutional right. Uh, it's meant to ensure a fair trial by a jury of one's peers. So the Georgia Constitution actually sets the rules for venue in different types of cases. We can take a look at the provision uh, governing civil cases, such as personal injury cases. Um, and these, according to the Georgia Constitution, shall be tried in the county where the defendant resides. So a resident of Georgia facing a lawsuit has a constitutional right to have the case heard in his or her county of residence. But you might ask, what happens if the defendant resides outside of Georgia? Or what if the defendant is a corporation with offices throughout the state? Then what? Well, here is where the Georgia legislature has provided for additional venue rules by statute. Well, we can take a look at a few of these. So as to non-residents, the official code of Georgia uh, section 9-10-93 pro provides that venue in cases under this article, we'll get to that, shall lie in any county where a substantial part of the business was transacted, the tortious act, omission, or injury occurred, or real property is located. Since we're injury lawyers, we're concerned with a tortious act, omission, or injury, essentially where the claim arose, right? Um, and by providing for venue where the tortious act, omission, or injury occurred, the legislature recognized that relevant witnesses and evidence may be found in that locale. And both the plaintiff and defendant will have at least some connection to that uh, county. Um, Again, this code section refers to under this article. Uh, if you look at the, the chapter that this is part of, um, it refers to uh, actions against non-residents. So this, it doesn't clearly say it right here in front of us um, that it's not actions against non-residents, but that's, uh, that's what this code section is about. And we won't spend a bunch of time talking about the other provisions of this article, but know that if there are multiple defendants, uh, the defendants who are uh, non-residents of the state of Georgia can be joined in the lawsuit um, filed in the county of residence where the uh, defendant who does reside in Georgia is deemed a resident. So um, but that's a little too deep for our purposes here today. Uh, let's talk next about motor vehicle cases. There's a special statute that governs motor vehicle cases that says, uh, as you can see, that uh, cases relating to the use of highways in the state by non-resident motorists. Uh, this is commonly referred to as the Non-Resident Motorist Act. Um, and it provides that an injured plaintiff in a car accident case uh, can sue the non-resident motorist in either A, the county where the accident or injury occurred, or B, the county where the plaintiff resides. So the plaintiff can choose to file in his or her own county of residence or go to where the accident happened. And um, the, um, there's some jurisdictional issues that um, are sort of interesting when it comes to non-resident motorists, but uh, we'll talk about the long-arm statute on a different video. Uh, next up, let's talk about corporations. So as to corporations, the rules get a little more complicated. Um, here, the law looks to where a corporation maintains its registered office. So in Georgia, if a company outside, incorporated outside the state of Georgia is going to do business in Georgia, they're required to register with the Secretary of State, and they'll have a uh, registered agent who's appointed to accept service of process, et cetera. And generally, that's where you'll file uh, against that corporation in, in the county where the registered agent is. But there's a lot of nuances and exceptions to that. Um, and you can see there's um, the statute that governs venue as to corporations actually um, gives a few different options here. So 
um, in a personal injury case, which is uh, what we have highlighted in subsections three and four, um, you, venue will be proper in the county where the cause of action originated, much like with uh, action against non-residents. Uh, again, the idea being that there's going to be connection to that location, to that county. There's going to be evidence and witnesses located in that county. So um, not only a matter of fairness, but also a matter of convenience. Um, and that's the case whether it's an individual defendant or a corporate defendant. Um, but again, there's some special rules with corporate defendants. And some of those have to do with whether the um, corporation has an office and transacts business in that county. So uh, if you're injured in uh, a given county, but the corporation does not have an office or transacts business and transacts business there, uh, then that corporation can uh, have a right to move the venue. In other words, transfer or remove to the county where the corporation maintains its principal place of business, which is a distinct term separate from the registered agent or registered office. Uh, we won't get into all the nuances there uh, in this video, but like I said, the rules get a little more nuanced when it comes to corporate venue, but typically a plaintiff is going to have some more choices um, than in a sort of basic car accident case where there's defendant lives in one county and that's just pretty much the end of the analysis. Um, but uh, again, the rules are recognizing that a case should be heard in a place that has some connection to the case as a matter of convenience and fairness. And plaintiffs do have uh, the choice of where to file uh, within this existing framework or rules. Sometimes there can be uh, some strategic decisions made by plaintiffs, and that's the plaintiff's right. Um, but if a plaintiff files suit in the wrong venue or sues multiple defendants and then settles with uh, one of those defendants, then the remaining defendant who does not reside in that county, right? If you settle with the resident defendant and then you leave the um, non-resident defendant, then that defendant can uh, move the venue and actually can present some problems because the court no longer at that point would have the power to hear the case. There are some uh, procedures that can be done to keep the venue in that place if, if you settle with the defendant, but if the court just dismisses a claim against uh, or dismisses a party from the case or get a claim against that defendant, then um, we are back in code section 9-10-93. You can see that venue has to be transferred to the county where it's proper. Um, but again, we won't get into vanishing venue uh, in depth here. Um, the last thing I'll say really is just that modernly trial lawyers talk a lot about um, you know, what is a favorable or good venue for their case. And as the traditional wisdom goes, a politically conservative county is, tends to have more defendant or defense oriented jurors, and uh, while a politically liberal county uh, will tend to have more plaintiff friendly jurors. That's the conventional wisdom. But of course, every case is different and every jury is different. So um, you have to take that with a grain of salt. And if you ask me, if you have a good case, a jury of your peers is going to be fair. And again, just that's to be taken uh, with a grain of salt. I believe in our jury system, it's uh, as Thomas Jefferson once said, the um, greatest anchor uh, created to date by man. And I totally butchered that quote, but you can look it up. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope uh, this has been informative.